Hey guys, Tech Many here, also known as Matthew Rivera, and today we're going to be unboxing and setting up this thing. This thing is called the Corsair H150i Elite LCD. This thing is amazing. It's a liquid cooler and AIO, which means all-in-one cooler. And I'm getting this because I recently installed my um, AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, which did not come with any type of cooler. You had to get it yourself because naturally this thing runs pretty hot. So I'm really excited to unbox this and just show y'all what this is about. So let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, so looking around the box, this is what it is going to be looking like. It has the IPS panel here. This thing is, I've heard that it's really clear and everything. It looks really nice. So on the top part here is the same thing as the front. The back side gives you details about what everything does. You can do, you can monitor, you can do a single bar design, a fade fill. You can even do GIFs or custom images images i'm probably i'm probably mainly going to be doing the cpu temp honestly because i just want to know um the temp of it and everything um here's the front it's not it's nothing really much the top area same thing as on the side the bottom shows what comes in the box which is pretty cool right here it comes with the radiator um three fans it comes with the command pro or command thing that controls the fan speed and rgb um, it comes with this thing. I don't know what that is. It comes with a splitter to USB. So you put, put this into one of your USBs on your motherboard. Gives you brackets for different types of sockets. And I think um, what comes stock on this um, cooler is Intel's one. So I just have to undo it and put um, the AMD 41 or AM41. Documentations and it gives you bolts, nuts, screws and all that stuff. Alright, so here we go. So it comes with safety and warranty information. Um, honestly, who reads this? Wow, this is really expensive stuff here. So these are the different brackets here. This is Intel's um, bracket, which we're not going to be using. Um, this is TR4 rendition, rentation, rentation. I think that's how you spell it. I say it, then this is what we're going to be using, AMD and 4. Um, thumb screws and screws, so I think we'll definitely be needing that. So <laughs> this is the fans here. These are 120, um, which equal um, 360. And I honestly, I don't think I'll be able to use my, um, my Cooler Master 360 millimeter one I have in the front of my PC case. And by the looks of it, this is a four pin. So this is a four pin power and four pin for the RGB. So these are probably 12 volts. But here is the actual, um, the pro, the command. Yes, it does use, uh, you know, SATA. This one goes into the USB. And these are all four pins, there's no three pin. So um, you won't be able to use that. And then they have this USB dongle thing not a dongle but it converts two different things to one usb so that's pretty cool here is the radiator and pump itself so let's see if we can separate all these and take the box off the desk so for so for the thermal paste that's on here stock they say that it's not that great for thermals for the cpu i have in my computer currently so i'm going to be removing this with alcohol and I'm gonna be adding this. This is um, what I used on my Mac. Um, if the thermals aren't well, I don't mind taking this off and replacing it with something different. Um, thermal paste is not that expensive, so I'm definitely down for this. So then we have this thing here. This is USB, the thing that goes into the hub, and I'm assuming this is some kind of fan hub. So I need to bring my PC up here and see how I can mount this because I don't think these will, um, how the way I want it, I don't think these tubes will reach the way I want it to route it, so I have to route it a different way. So I need to figure out if this will reach. Um, I want this to suck in air. So by the looks of it, if I try to stab it in here like this, 
it might actually fit but the problem is this huge thing right here is it blocking the way the only thing i can really tell is actually putting these fans on and then seeing if i can route this like this i don't think i can that's the problem but they say to mount it like this so that the air can reach up top here and um and no air will be going through these lines here it'll stay right at the top it'll have to be with the hoses mounted at the top which i don't want to for it to be but it's just fine it won't really kill the pump so i'll have to mount the fan um, in here then put a screw through here to hold the radiator in place and um, that's for all three fans and then of course we'll have to replace these tabs here remove um, the thermal paste on this place thermal paste on the cpu and we'll be good so i'm going to remove this cooler master fan from my computer and mount this and i'll get back to you when i'm changing out the mounts <laughs> thing I had to do I had to line up everything and like I did this first one I had trouble finding the hole and it was sort of like holding this until I got sort of all the corners done and then I can literally just screw in every single one and I used all screws um, I routed all the wires these two are going up here down then this one is going through the back because the RGB module is going to be somewhere right here that's where I think it's going to be so um this is mounted right now it's currently mounted it ain't going nowhere it's part of this thing now so what you do is that you just pull on these like that right don't get the thermal paste on you you grab your amd am4 now it's worth mentioning that you will have to use your stock um backing plate for your cpu so whatever cpu you had Previously to this, it had a backing plate. For instance, mine had this on the back. So you're gonna use this for the mounting um, area. So that's what you have to use. This goes in the back of um, the motherboard or where that excess is, and you screw these studs in. So there are two different sides to, to this. The thicker side and a thinner side. The thicker side goes to the mounting plate itself. So what you do is that you grab the thicker side, here's the mounting area that's gonna come through those four holes. And all you do is just screw in like that and you're gonna make sure it's just hand tight. Do not over tighten it, not worth over tightening. Um, so just hand tighten it, then do like, you can't even actually over tighten it either. So just do it hand tightened. So 
Um, it doesn't matter which way it, it goes. Um, they are meant to be going either way. So you can either do it this way, you can do it that way, it does not matter. But all you do is that there's these grooves here, right in the center here. And these grooves line up like this. So all you do is you find these grooves here, like that. And all you do is you push in from here, and that's it. And then the other side is the same exact way. It does not matter which side you place it on. Um, I like to be sort of a neat freak and I do it the same side. <laughs> so, um, slides in here. If I can slide it in, there we go. And then it goes like that. This stuff has, um, you know, sticker like stuff. So at this point you should remove it if you're installing it right now, but I'm going to be removing the thermal paste and adding my own thermal paste to it. You can do this by yourself or you can use a friend for this. It's pretty simple. Um, so we can just grab one, um, thumb nut, right? Thumb nut stud right now. All you do is go under here, lift it. And I have wires that are covering this. So all I'm doing, I know where these are. So I'm moving the wires out of the way. And then they are all shown right now. All you do is hold it. And the thicker side here goes directly inside, like so. And it should hold it in place. But still, I would just um, grab all the other mounting hardware if I can see it. <laughs> and mount them. Alrighty, and it's in. So now that stud plate right there is not gonna go anywhere. It does wiggle, as you heard, but this should tighten it down. So it should make a sandwich because of the thermal place and everything. This entire thing is gonna make it squeeze down and should all be good from there. But for right now, we're gonna remove the thermal paste from this. But all you do, I have very little alcohol here. You just do isopropyl alcohol and you just add a little bit to this. So it's not dripping, of course. You don't want it drip, drip, drip. Because of course, this is electronics. It doesn't harm it, but you don't want a lot anyways. So we're gonna, this is something called a thermal pad. Um, there's also something called thermal paste, which is what we're going to be using. But thermal pad is a pretty simple thing that you stick on here and that's it. And you can see it's a very thin layer. So I'm assuming that's why the, um, I'm assuming that's why it's not the greatest. So all you do is you grab this and you go with the grain and you try taking it off with the grain. You don't go against it because these are lined and with the grain, see? It's pretty simple. Okay, so that is pretty much dry. I don't see any residue. I don't see it any flashing of, you know, like it drying up. So um, right now we're going to add the thermal paste. And I want to remind you, I did this probably a year or two ago and thermal paste does not expire. It just runs out. <laughs> so I still have a lot of thermal paste a lot because um, I didn't use a lot and this does not come with an applicator you just put a sort of like pea size dot but for me I'm going to add a little bit more just in case I'm not going to add too much but what I would like to do is remove the plastic here because I know that's going to be very difficult to do when that's in there I'll do it next <laughs> so we'll come over here start from here and there we go. Like so. Make that a bigger X. Hopefully this doesn't spew out. So we're gonna keep it like that. But next up, we're going to use these four thumb nuts right here to tighten these. And we're going to hand tighten them first. And then we're just like placing them on, hand tying them. Then we're going to use our Phillips head and do a crisscross pattern to make sure they are tight. 
and you're not going to over tighten it because that's not good. You never want to over tighten this. But first, we need to unwrap this bundles of wire. So we're going to unwrap it quite simply. Um, it looks like this one goes to the controller. This one is not fan, so I'm assuming this one is fan. Alrighty, so it's gonna go like this. Make sure all cables are out of the way. And grab a thumb nut. And finally, slowly and gently try to line up all the screws up together. Because once you put this in, that's it. You don't want to move it around and smear it. And then... Yep, you have to hold the plate. You have to hold the plate. Okay, so we're going to use one of these screw ins. I'm going to do a screw in all four, but hand tighten them. Of course, I'm hand tightening them crisscross. And then with these thumb screws, the backing plate will rise up and smush like a sandwich. Okay, find the other one. There it is. It's getting a little bit more difficult. There it goes. And this thing is cockeyed, so we're going to turn it to make it nice. Now we're going to hand tighten it just a little bit. Just gonna keep screwing it, screwing it, screwing it. And um, doing it in a crisscross pattern because you don't want to screw these up. So now we're gonna do, um, we're gonna make it, if it doesn't turn anymore, we're gonna do a half turn. So that one doesn't turn, half. That one, that stopped turning, half. Not even half, actually. That stop turning, half. That stop turning, half. All right. Yeah, you installed. I still don't like how these look, but I guess they'll do the job for right now. I just don't really like how close they are to the RAM. We're going to um, put these in the back like this. I wish there was, yeah, there's nothing else here. It's only this side right here. So we're gonna route it up like that. Make sure it's out of this top fan's way. Still don't like how it's routed still. It's terrible. I'm gonna feed this from up here and hopefully it will reach the hub wherever I place it. And I think, it, I think this goes into the post here and um, these should line up how it's supposed to be put that out <laughs> uh, it should line up like that this is going to be very difficult for my chubby hands and that was easy that's in there so now i'm going to tuck this under here like that these are all the RGB fans, all these. So I want to line these up like this, including these. That's fans, and this is controller. I think I'm going to mount it right here so that this can reach up here like that then all the wires can just come running through here. Let's see how we can mount this. We're gonna use the 3M strips that came with it. And voila. That's it. So this one says to RGB hub. So I'm assuming this is power. So this is the bottom one. I'm gonna do power right here. So this is the third one, third. In order for you to mount the RGB one, there's a little clip right here, and that's where it goes into the hub. So we'll do that for all three, for RGB and for the hub. So now it's these things. 
Now I do have an available SATA, which I don't have a problem right here. So that can connect right here. From me installing the power supply, this can literally go like that, and I can shove it in here, which is fine by me. But then we have a USB, and then another USB. This one goes like this in here. If you see here, there's a white um, dot here, like a square, and then on here is a white. So, um, yeah, there it goes, like that. But there is now two USBs right here, which I need to figure out where to place. Usually there is something, yeah, right here, which is two USB E34 and E12. So right now we're gonna find this USB one right here and take the shorter out, which is zip tying it to this and up. So yeah, I'll have to do that. So we'll go in here. Then this one, do the same thing and go through the same hole. I'm gonna flip it and plug those two connectors into those USBs. And finally, we are pretty much done at this point. Um, I do need to um, make sure that the slack is all correct in here and make sure everything's all nice. I'll bundle it off with zip ties. I really don't like how tight this thing is, but that's the way it's gonna be. I'm gonna tidy everything up and um, placing it all back together because we are done pretty much. Wow, this took forever. <laughs>
thing up and see if it actually works and hopefully no smoke appears. It is worth mentioning that if you do have this power supply or anything like that, use the recommended cable that, um, that comes with this, the power supply cable that you plug into an outlet. Okay, here we go. Put up. Yes, we got it booted. Oh my god. The display works, these lights work, all lights work. The RAM looks beautiful. Oh my god, dude, it works. So I won't be doing overclocking for this because the CPU already is really good. Um, it doesn't need overclocking, I don't think, and also it just takes up more heat. So I don't think I'll do overclocking. What I am gonna be doing is doing the DCOCP or XMP. It's basically the, um, the RAM clocking speed. So by default, it's um, RAM by 2,666 megahertz. That's not good. So we're gonna be doing that right here to profile one which go, boosts it up to um, 3,600 megahertz, which is awesome. So that's good clocking speed for, this, for the RAM. Um, it looks like all of RAM slots are being read, which is good. That's pretty much it. I don't wanna do any overclocking on this thing. I think I don't need it. So we'll save and exit. It's gonna boot up again. This is nuts, guys. My first try and everything worked. Performance wise, so CPU is 5950X, 16 core. It's, it's speed is at, it's 4.3, 4.40. Um, then the memory, it's 128, but it's available 122 because it uses some. Um, coolant is 80 degrees because um, it switched to Fahrenheit right now. I'm speechless, I'm like, what the heck? So we can change however this looks too lighting, all this other stuff. And I can tell you right now, this display is very clear. Um, like, it's really freaking clear. We can even do a GIF, I like that. That's really nice. It works terrifically. And I could not be any more happy than what I am right now. It looks beautiful inside. Have you subscribed yet? If not, what are you doing? You should. When you subscribe, there is something called a notification bell. And when you press that, you will get notified whenever I upload a video like this or any type of video. I also have a vlogging and gaming channel. The links will be in the description box below and you can check it out at the last 20 seconds of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm pretty much speechless. I don't know what else to say. Um, it just works. And that's all I can say. <laughs>